Oh man, it's good to be out here. Here, I'll go to the right, you'll go to the left. There we go. Is that a knee bike? No. My. Uh, Just a I mountain forgot. bike, huh? Yeah, I forgot what is it called. Like this part over here. Oh, shoot. Yeah, a branch caught on me and this make this part go in. Oh, and, dude. Yeah. The, hey, the let, me, let me see if I can help you right quick. It always helps to help somebody out. You never know. What's going on? Murder has the bike enthusiast. Welcome on back to the channel. In today's video, we are going for a ride. That is a must. We have to. We have to do it now. Temperatures are great. It's a fine 80 something degrees right now. We got cloud covers. We got rain tomorrow, Labor Day. And we got a lovely ride. We are going to be doing a golden hour ride. Stick around. We'll get to it right after this. Speed limits friggin' suck. It's been a while. It's been too long and I've been wanting to get on this bike and go. We messed around with the chain tensioner. We added a different one and it didn't really end up working out. Now, the reason why we started messing with it in the first place, you know, that's pretty simple. We, well, the original bracket was kind of bent on it. It wasn't looking too good. So I tried something different and I wish I would have just left it alone entirely. I didn't. Instead, I put it back the way it was but I upgraded the bracket holding it to the side. Um, it's still it's still kind of at an angle, and that's because of the case. But listen to this. Okay, I'm about to make chain tension. Chain alignment, the most easiest thing there will ever be in your entire life, okay? All these motorcycle professionals, all these motorized bike enthusiasts, they all say the same exact thing. Look at your chain dead on and make sure it's in a straight line. That is true, but there's a lot. There is a ton that can make that chain go all sneakily, wiggly, wobbly. Okay, here's how you actually do it. I know you two-stroke guys, you're not going to be able to see your front sprocket, but that's okay because that's all the more reason to pour out your fine skills and do what you need to do. On your rear sprocket, you're going to be looking for one thing. You're going to be looking at the teeth where the chain is. You're going to see that if you if you got good chain alignment, you're going to see that you have your teeth in the dead center of the chain. Now, these are just over a little bit, but that's because the sprocket has a little bit of a dish to it. it it's got some warpage, okay? It's not perfect, but that's okay. It's, it's dead on, and it's dead in the center as we look up to these teeth. Now, if these teeth were kind of pushed to one side or the other of the chain, then you would know right away that it's not, it's not centered, okay? It is off by a ton. And that's exactly how you tell whether or not you've got good chain alignment. That's it. That's all. As for the most controversial topic on motorized bikes, even motorcycle guys, they all say the same thing. If you can, don't run a chain tensioner. But here's the thing. On these bicycles... There is a common thing. You look at this one. This is a mountain bike. It's got wider. It's got a fork that 
chain stay that goes out and it's wider here than it is up here if you're trying to mount an engine to this and put a chain tensioner on this chain stay you're going to have a discrepancy it's not going to be in line that's the number one reason nobody will say that's why but that's why they say don't recommend them or that's why they say don't use them they don't understand the reason why they just don't want people to use chain tensioners so i'm going to show you the right way the right way is to go ahead make you a spring tensioner. The thing with a spring tensioner is it's mounted to the motor. It's right up here where all the forces are. If it can move, if it can adjust with the chain and it's straight, then that's all that matters. Yes, this one is kind of dished out at an angle, but that's all mounting related, okay? It's not extreme. It's not like it's about to fall off. No, so it's good. So again, where the axle mounts up to the bike is wider than it is up here by the motor. And you're not going to be able to run a stock 4-bolt chain tensioner. Just saying. Anyway, we've got some riding to do. Let's go do it. Let's get, let's go, let's go. We gotta go. Hey, go now. You might want to move your pole, sir. I want to. I want to hit your hook. This is a slant. Yeah, ride it like a slant. Shoot. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah. Is that a knee bike? Huh? Is that a knee bike? No. My. Uh. It's just a mountain bike, huh? Yeah, I forgot what is it called, like. This part over here. Oh shoot! Yeah, a branch caught on me and this 
make this part go in. Oh, and, dude. Yeah. Hey, the let, me, let me see if I can help you right quick. What's that? You made it? Yeah, let's uh, let's get over here to the side. That's right. my brother. He went trying to get him. So you're having trouble going, right? Yeah, I mean that kind of. Shoot. I mean your chain's bent. I mean if you can, how far are you away from home? This is my brother. He went. Uh, he just keep going. And, okay. Yeah. So yeah, you, you're, you're just kind of stuck here, huh? How fast it goes? Like 40, 45 ish. 45? Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. It's uh, Motorized Andrew. Uh huh. So it's you can you can look me Andrew. up. I do I re repair engines all day long, do all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, okay, that's cool. Or say, man, do you have a good Labor Day? Thank you, you too. seconds and heck if you're not a people person that's all right get out there meet some people get cultured man i i don't like those people who go in their bedrooms and you know they're like they, they like the dark you know what i mean now nah, I'm, I'm here i'm trying to make a difference in this world i want to be positive i want to be positive make a difference Put my name out there, you know what I mean? train cars haven't been tagged up more than they are. They've been sitting here for a while. A couple, couple of days these train cars been here. This is, this right here goes over to Midlothian. They got a big old concrete plant over there and so they haul like raw materials and stuff. And it's just like a little short line railway. Actually the BNSF Burlington Northern Santa Fe, they, they operate it. But it's, it's a short line, and so yeah, it goes it goes south. So you'll you'll see the street right up here is uh, Santa Fe. Now that used to be the old Santa Fe line, which actually before then was actually a uh, like a Mexican-owned 
um, line. It, it is uh, S.G. Alexander or something, and that's actually what they named uh, segment of the highway, which all these streets that I'm saying right now, they are parallel with this railroad track. Santa Fe, dead end, and it continues going the other way. And the tracks, they, they just go southbound. They go all the way, they follow. You've got US 67 right out here, and that these tracks follow that direction. Now 67 isn't straight. Once you get to Midlothian, you've got uh, State Highway 287. I think it's state. It may be. It may be U.S. 287 combined. So you've got you've got two railways here, or uh, two highways. Once this gets past that junction, it goes. It keeps going to the concrete plant, and it dead ends. So these tracks only, they only go that far. Now, other direction, I have no idea. Got no clue on. Sorry, what's that? Nah, actually, I keep all my change at home. I'm sorry about that. If I did, I would give you some.
haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> Seriously, I haven't done it off camera or on camera. That felt so good, man. All right, y'all. Let's cut to the ending. There's the batteries. Please. 